Hello, welcome back to PL SQL tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about how to how to use a select statement to retrieve data from the database. Uh, here is a simple example where uh, we are selecting uh, employee name Sal from the employee table where employee number is 7369. So what happens is that we have we declare two temporary variables called v underscore name and v underscore Sal and we select since this query is going to return only one row so therefore v name underscore v name and v cell from, from the database and test into these two temporary variables let's say this variable is a and so it is 500 and then we in the line number 10 we we basically say from the temporary variable we we print using dbms output put line okay so essentially what we do once we get this data we can basically you know do whatever logic that we want to we have in mind after this line number 10, 9 with the temporary variables okay. so that is the basically that is the idea behind all this thing that first fetch from the database to some temporary variable and then run this thing. so this is an example of how you use a select statement so let's try to see what's going to happen for this query if i remove that where condition Assuming that my employee table in my database has 14 rows, 14 employees, 14 employees. So is this thing is going to work now? So again, I declare a variable v underscore name and v underscore cell. But here, instead of getting one row, one name and one salary, I'm going to fetch multiple employee names and multiple salaries, depending on how many number of rows I have in my EMP table in the database. So essentially, this is going to fail because you know we have only one variable to put, right? So one variable to put we are we are getting, but however we are getting 14 names. Okay, so this is something going to going to fail, and this is going to basically go to this line number 14 exception handling, and we're going to discuss later on. But now let's try to see like you know, how do I basically I so so far I know how to do with a one one row, but I don't have any anything to do how do i do with the multiple number of rows if my query is going to fetch multiple number of rows how do we solve for that we have a solution okay so let's try to discuss about the solution and then we will tell you about the name of those solutions okay so here is our employee table so employee table has employee name employee employee number employee name job and so on okay and then i have basically 14 rows okay so what i do first i declare so this is in my database. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I will declare a area, which I will call a private area, where I can store data temporarily. Okay. So first thing is declare a private area. Then whatever is your query, right? So in this case, select ename comma sal, right? So get this enum this column and sub this column okay to this private area so i will have like this enum sub so first row is say king and sub is 5000 second row is black Salary is 2850. Okay, and so on. So there are 14 rows, so I will have 14 rows. So this is 14. Okay. So in this private area, so in this private area, I'm going to get fetch this data from the database to here. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to fetch from this private area to my temporary variable called v underscore name and v underscore cell one at a time okay so first time it will become k and then two eight five so basically this is my variable this is another variable okay so the value of you know so i'm going to fetch at a time one from this private sql area to the temporary variable then once i fetch from my private sql area to this temporary variable i can manipulate whatever i want all right once 
and then after I fetch my first row, then I'm going to fetch the second row again to this temporary value. So king is, you know, whenever I'm going to fetch the second row, so v underscore name will be black and the salary will be 2850. So, okay. so this is what this is how I'm going to do. And I'm going to finish until I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep fetching from this area, private SQL area, to this temporary variable until I'm done this 14 rows. So this private SQL area is also called as parser. Okay. So by using cursors, I can manipulate my, I can solve this problem whenever it's going to return multiple rows. So what is the essential life cycle of a cursor? The first thing is I'm going to declare. So whenever you declare, that means I'm just creating a private SQL area and then nothing is there. And the name of that, so whatever the, like, you know, the way that you name a variable, similarly you name the, the cursor. Let's say the cursor name is C1. So therefore, this private area name is C1. Okay. So what C1 is going to contain? C1 is going to contain depending on what you are going to selecting from. So what is the columns that you are selecting? If you are, if you are going to select E name and star, well, then this private area can contain two things, E name and star. Okay. And after that, the next step is called open. So when I open, so that is the time, actually the query is going to execute it. Okay, so the, whatever this thing is going to execute it, and all this data is going to fetch to this area, this private SQL area. The name of the private SQL area is C1 because we named it during the declaration time. And then, so here basically this king and all these things are there, all 14 rows are there. And after that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a fetch. So when I'm going to do a fetch, what essentially I'm going to do, I'm going to get this first row and then put into a temporary variable called v underscore name, v underscore sign. And I'm going to fetch until I'm empty. I'm going to start fetching for the first row. And after I fetch the first row, I go to second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, and so on. And once I'm empty, so until I'm empty, I'm going to keep fetching inside a loop. Then once I finish, you know, once I finish this loop, I'm going to close the cursor. Close the cursor means all this is going to destroy. Okay. So this is what is basically essentially meaning of a cursor. So let's try to take a look how this thing works in example. So what I did, so here is a declaration. Okay, so, so let me draw this diagram. Declare, open, fetch, condition check that it is empty or not. If not empty, then go and do again and then close. Okay, so I declare two variables v underscore e name. So basically, you know, this is my temporary variable v underscore e name and then v underscore name and when i do when i do cursor c1 it's so like here it also i i did, i have named a sql area that name is c1 so this is what is going to happen at the line number six when at line number eight i'm going to open c1 this query is going to execute it employee number and employee name is going to come and then stay here assuming that i have 14 rows in my employee table I'm going to have 14 rows here in this private SQL area. This is also called private SQL area. Or a cursor or whatever. Okay. The name of that is C1. Then I am putting a loop. I'm going to fetch C1. So whenever I'm going to fetch C1, for the first time, 
we are going to fetch the value whatever let's say i my employee number one x two y three a four p so this is what comes from the database okay so whenever we're going to do the fetch c1 into this thing into v e now and v name this one and x will come to here to this temporary variable and then at line number 11 i am doing exit when c1 percentage not found just in the next slide we are going to do what is c1 percentage not found but for the time being remember that until we are finished all this thing done this is going to return me false okay so that means at this point it will check if there is another row after this after this uh, row the answer is yes so therefore c1 percentage not found is going to be false therefore again i'm going to come and then paste second row so paste second row so this when i paste the second row to this variable this become two and this become y okay this become y and so on it continue and then let's say assuming that we have four rows at, at the row number four what is going to happen is that this is becoming four and this is becoming b okay and then now since there is no more row available c1 percentage not found will become true that means now this loop is going to exit so once this loop is going to exit i'm going to come to end loop line number 14 i'm going to close the c1 when you close this c1 so essentially what you do you will destroy this private scalar okay so this is how is the cursor is manipulated and basically what we are what we have given you the ability to manipulate the row individually one after another okay so whenever you're going to run multiple rows you have to you can do this way however you don't really need to go to all this open loop you know fetch and all this thing oracle gives you another way of handling all this life cycle whatever you've shown you from declare open fetch and all this thing by something called cursor for loop cursor for loop so what essentially cursor for loop simplifies your open this close and all this so let's take a look what is cursor for loop again i declare so that means i have a active set at sql area with c1 and then that things just, just 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 something like this whenever i come to line number six that is where i am doing for rec that means at this point is going to create a temporary variable called rec okay so what that rec can contain that rec can contain a employee name and salary so a compartment like this it has e name and so okay that can contain so this is basically for rec in c1 it does this number two what it does implicitly it is going to open and fetch the first row so whatever so one a is there so one a is coming to here and then how do i access this one a by something called rec dot enum so why enum because this is what is enum this is what salary so therefore the this is a composite data type rec is a composite data type and each individual data is going to access by rec dot enum and rec dot sam okay so this is the rec dot sam okay then it will automatically this for loop will automatically exit when it's going to traverse all these rows that means this loop is going to loop for four times and after that it automatically going to get away so therefore whatever we are doing in our previous example of fetching exit and close all this is done by this for loop automatically for you so this is what is called cursor for loop basically you use cursor for loop in your real life programming a lot of, not a lot of people are going to do all this computation okay. well so the next thing that we need to understand whenever we do this declare say like we do declare cursor c1 ph select enum from MP. So basically, by this is equivalent to having a private SQL area named C1. Also, there are four more things happening. 
it also creates four variables like number boolean variables it has created for you by default four different variables those variable names are little bit of weird but they are basically the same so what is the name the first variable is created called c1 percentage each open okay so the, the, the variable name is c1 percentage each open this is similar to if i declare a variable say x boolean okay so what this x is same thing is don't worry about what is percentage and all this thing the variable name so whatever you the name of the cursor you give oracle is going to create a variable called c1 percentage is open whatever the name of the cursor name of the cursor concatenated with percentage is open what kind of variable is this this is a boolean variable this can contain either true or false next thing is going to contain is c1 percentage found against another variable boolean variable it can contain true or false another thing is going to create is c1 percentage not found i don't know this is just opposite of whatever is c1 percentage found okay the same the fourth variable is going to create is c1 percentage no count okay so take let's take a look so c1 percentage is open it will tell that if the cursor is open or not for example in this code if i want to write the value of c1 percentage is open in this case it will be false as line number 7 after line number 8 if i write c1 percentage is open this is going to give me true because i have already opened if for whatever reason i cannot open the c1 then it's going to give me a false okay then c1 percentage not found so let's take a look so so c1 is open either true after the cursor is open after the cursor is open if the cursor after opening opening the cursor means what i am executing the query if that query returns me couple of rows then c1 percentage found is true then c1 percentage not found is reverse of c1 percentage found to be false okay. so for example if the query select in m from cell where if my query is something where employee number is less is greater than 1000 so let's say i don't have an employee number which is more than 1000 therefore this query is going to return me zero rows in that case c1 percentage found will be false c1 percentage not found will be true but in our case assuming that i don't have any where clause here just from emp assuming that i have returning some some rows then c1 percentage found will become true c1 percentage not found will become false then c1 percentage row count tells me how many rows are actually fetched at the beginning of the loop like let's say so for, so whenever i doing the doing this in first time here so at this time right so fetch c1 to loop the first time the very first time whenever i do if i do c1 percentage row count this will give me zero because nothing has fetched and after i fetched one row i'm going to get this value as one so after i fetch the second row this value become 2 after i fetch all 14 rows this value become 14 so basically c1 percentage row count tells me where my where my pointer is okay so these are the four different cursor variables that comes by default you don't have to worry about anything you have to use them to get you know to basically to carry on on, on your program so these things by default will be there okay so now so let's discuss about the very first case so whenever we did the select from emp we didn't declare any cursor yes because it's just only one one that one row is returning right we don't have to do that but what what actually oracle does internally it has an active active sql area that area name is called sql So instead of C1, you don't have to declare any cursor. Oracle, but however, everything that you run will be have you know, every SQL statement you are going to run in PL SQL will have an 
active active SQL area. Okay, so in this case, in in this example, we we declare a explicitly we declare a cursor, but in our simple select we don't have, we didn't do anything, but indeed Oracle declare implicitly a area called capital SQL. Okay, and then how many rows SQL will have? To always have only one row, okay? because because as you say that you know this simple you know this this thing is going to return only one row. Had it been written multiple rows, then I have to go and declare the cursor myself. Okay, so therefore in this case, is the, the 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 default cursor name is SQL, but it will also have all those four variables, whatever I told. Since the cursor name is SQL, so therefore the variable name will be SQL percentage is open. SQL percentage found. SQL percentage not found. And SQL percentage row found. Right. So therefore, see in this thing, SQL percentage row count would be one. Right. But let's say, however, so SQL percentage row count would be one here. So this is because only one row got affected. Only one row selected. Let's say I want to do something like declare x something and then begin. And I do delete from EMP. That means when I do delete from EMP, as I told you, everything everything in SQL, every SQL statement will have a private area, SQL area, right? So that means so here basically I'm executing delete from EMP, right? But if delete from EMP, so and then the name of that thing is X capital SQL. So when I do delete from EMP, exactly same way that I should have four variable called SQL percentage is open and all this thing. The important variable here is SQL percentage row count. So if the delete from EMP is going to delete four rows, then SQL percentage row count will be four because four rows are got affected by this SQL statement. So that is what, and also if you print DBMS output put line, SQL percentage row count, it will give you exactly how many rows got deleted by this SQL statement. So this is what is a implicit cursor. So again, to wrap up, so cursors are of implicit or explicit. The implicit cursor name is capital SQL. The explicit cursor name is you give a name, and if you give C1, then the the default area, private area is name is C1. And then implicit cursor cursor, you don't have to worry about anything. But in case of explicit cursor, you have to manage the cursor lifecycle. That means you have to declare, begin, sorry, declare, open, fetch, and then close. And you don't, you don't have to do anything for this SQL area, uh, for, for this implicit uh, cursor. And the explicit cursor to handle this thing, all this thing, uh, you know, simply, you can use cursor for loop. So that's all about cursors. And we are going to discuss more about parameterized cursors, red cursors, and all these things in later videos. And, and we'll do a lot of examples. Thank you.